All right, guys. So welcome back. So hopefully you're enjoying, guys, the um, BMAT section two chemistry section so far, where we looked at the topic of reactions before this. Now, guys, we're going to move on to another topic, not as important as the reaction topic, but still important nonetheless, because it does come up. And when it does come up, it can be quite difficult. And that topic is electrolysis. So um, as I say, guys, it comes up quite only a few times. So it might not even come up in your paper, but it's really important that you understand the concepts and the specification points, because when it does come up, um, it can come up quite meaty. Okay, so let's now proceed on to the question, guys. And the first question uh, we had is BMAT 2019, question six. So this is a chemist used electrolysis to electroplate a pure copper electrode with a layer of silver. The concentration of metal ions in the electrolyte was kept constant. Which one of the table identifies appropriate substances used at the anode, uh, the cathode, and the electrolyte? So, guys, pause the video, give yourself uh, just under a minute, be sure to be back after that, where we're going to go through the solutions. All right, guys, so welcome back. So let's go through this. So firstly, just um, doing a bit of revision on um, how electrolysis works. Remember, in electrolysis, you essentially have a cell, and this is hooked up to two electrodes. So you have one electrode here, okay, and then you have one electrode here. So something like that. And then uh, remember, guys, in, in a cell, the big line is the positive terminal, and that's the negative terminal. So the, then the electrode is hooked up to the positive terminal, becomes the positive electrode and the one with the negative term becomes a negative electrode and then this whole thing is bathed in a solution right that's bathed in a solution which i can show here which contains the electrolyte right so that's basically what's going on so um in this case over here what we essentially want is we have a copper rod so this is a copper rod so cu so cu and then essentially what we want to do is we want to surround this copper rod this is what electroporation means we want to surround this copper rod with a layer of silver so this one we want a layer of silver to surround that and to coat it right as i say that's what electroporation is so what we need then guys is in some form we need the electrolyte to have silver ions so ag plus ions right and obviously the um since opposites attract the silver ions will be attracted to the negative electrode right so that will be attracted to the negative terminal okay and so that basically means then that the negative terminal must be made from copper right because what's essentially going to happen is that the uh, silver ions are going to be attracted to the negative electrode which is made of copper and then remember um electrons are going to move in this direction right so electrons are essentially going to move in this direction and when they move in that direction the silver ions deposited on the copper rod or the copper electrode um, they're going to gain the electron become silver atoms and basically pure silver. So you have copper coated with uh, a layer of silver, which is what we want, isn't it? So now we've already figured out a few things. So now what we know is that the negative electrode or the cathode, we want that to be um, pure copper. So we're left with this option. We have this option or we have this option. Okay, so so we have that, and then the electrolyte, we really said, we, it has to, in some form, have silver in it. So that means we're left with these three now, right? And then we can exclude this one out because of that. So now it's between um, D and F. So is it either going to be at the anode a pure silver rod or a pure graphite rod, right? Now, this is when the question gets a bit challenging. So what you actually want on the anode, the positive electrode, is you want a pure silver rod. And I explain why that be uh, why that is. Now, the key part of the question, which tells me we want a pure, pure silver rod, is because of the concentration of metal ions. Metal ions was kept constant. Now, what's the metal ion in this solution? It's going to be the silver ion, isn't it? So we want that to remain constant. So remember, at the um, what's essentially going to uh, happen at the positive electrode then is that the the sil the silver right so the silver is gonna release electrons right when it releases electrons that becomes uh, ag plus right so that becomes ag plus and then that ag plus is going to replenish what's been taken up in this step right so basically you're through that mechanism you're keeping the concentration of metal ions constant so that's why you would want a pure silver rod in this case and hence why um, i believe d would be the correct answer in this case so hopefully guys that introduction to how electrolysis works uh, made a lot of sense there's a few more concepts we need to go through but we'll go through that in the next questions um but if you have any questions guys just post them down below and, and we can address them but hopefully guys uh, that's made sense and as always we look forward to seeing you in the next video
All right, guys, so welcome back. So previously, you're looking at BMAT 2019, question six, um, our first question on electrolysis. And I must admit, this was quite a difficult question to start off with. But hopefully, guys, you're, uh, you're able to gather the key points. Now, guys, we move on to the next question, BMAT 2017, question two. There's a diagram shows an electrolysis experiment. You have a diagram similar to what we've seen before. But the only difference here um, is we have an ammeter. Remember, all an ammeter does is measures current. So basically, how much electrons are um, passing that point in a given time. Uh, which reaction occurs at the anode and which reaction occurs at the cathode for this experiment. So guys, pause the video, uh, give yourself uh, just less than a minute, be sure to be back after that, and then we're going to go through the solution. All right, guys, so welcome back. So let's go through this, right? So remember, here our electrolyte is copper sulfate, so that's going to have copper ions, right? It's going to have sulfate ions, right? And a key thing here, guys, is, is a copper sulfate solution. That means this is all dissolved in water. And in water, guys, water can actually split, right? Water can actually split, not fully, but a bit, right, into hydrogen ions and OH minus ions. So on top of this over here, what you have is um, hydroxide ions, and you also have um, hydrogen ions in here as well. Okay, so now we need to um, now we need to see what's basically happening here. So you have a negative electrode here and you have the positive electrode here. So the positive is going to be attracted to the SO4 2 minus and it's also going to be attracted to the OH minus, isn't it? Yeah. And then uh, at the negative electrode, you're going to have the copper, so C2 plus, and also the hydrogen, right? So let's deal with basically what's going to happen at the negative electrode. First. That's, that's a bit easier, right? So what's going to happen at the negative electrode? Is the copper going to gain the electrons or is the hydrogen going to gain the electro electrons? Now this actually, this goes back guys, to what we were doing in the previous topic, reaction. That's why I've done that one first. This, this requires you guys to know your reactivity series. And if you remember your reactivity series, um, copper is well below hydrogen. Hydrogen is going to be quite up. Remember, copper, silver, and gold are the, the least reactive ones, right? So if it's less reactive, that means it's, less wanting to be in, in an ionized form and therefore it's more wanting to be reduced as in it wants to gain the electrons more so in this case copper is going to gain the electrons rather than hydrogen so what's going to happen here then is that that copper is going to gain two electrons and become just copper atoms so now we're then left with a or e so those are our two options now what happens at the negative electrode is a bit um it, 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 it requires a bit more form so what's going to happen either you have um, OH minus ions, you have SO4 2 minus ions, right? So basically the rule here is, guys, that if if you have a halogen at the positive electrode, if you have a halide ion like a chloride, fluoride, bromide, iodide, um, those ones would um, um, oxidize and they will become, you know, uh, their respective things, so fluorine, chlorine, iodine, bromine, etc., etc., right? Whereas whatever else you have what's always what always should happen is that the oh minus um should um oxidize right and i think it oxidizes to water uh, um to water and it gives us electrons so here what we should expect is that the oh minus should oxidize so that immediately excludes a but now there's something weird going on and what's actually going on here is that the copper um so what's actually going on here, guys, is that the copper um, is oxidizing. So the copper, because remember, this anode is made of copper, so that itself is oxidizing and giving away the electrons. Um, the reason for that, I'm not entirely sure why that is, right? Um, the, the obvious explanation is clearly, guys, that the copper is going to be more reactive than either of the two, therefore it's more, has a higher tendency to oxidize. But even if you didn't know that, if you just know the rule, guys, that... Um, if you have a halide, that would oxidize. If you don't have a halide, the OH minus would oxidize, right? But there's no OH minus op uh, option here. So the thing that must oxidize here then is the copper. So give me copper 2 plus and uh, 2 electrons. That's why I think E is going to be the correct answer here. So hopefully, guys, that has made sense. Any comments, guys, anything which is unclear, just pop them down in the comments. As always, guys, we really hope you see you in the next video and hopefully that was clear. All right, guys, so welcome back. So previously, we were looking at this question, BMAT 2017, question 2. Um, it was a bit uh, awkward, guys, um, to explain the reasoning of what's happening at the anode. But hopefully, guys, um, through elimination of, um, of what we talked about, um, that has made a lot of sense. And we managed to get the extra points of, you know, um, the details of electrolysis that weren't covered in the previous question. Now, guys, we're going to move on to the next question, which is BMAT 2016. This says, identify the correct products of electrolysis of the following electrolytes. So, guys, pause the video, give yourself a minute, be sure to be back after that. And then we're going to be going through the solution. 
All right, guys, so let's go through this one. So let's go through A. So in A, um, um, so we have aqueous calcium bromine. Remember, aqueous, guys, it means dissolved in water. And whenever you're dissolved in water, you also have to consider hydrogen ions, hydroxide ions. And here you have calcium bromine, so you have calcium ions, and you have bromide ions as well, right? So remember, guys, um, so at the positive terminal, so I kind of put it up, up, so the stuff at the top is going to go to the negative terminal, stuff at the bottom is going to go to the positive terminal. So at the positive term, you have OH minus and you have Br minus. Now, which one's going to form? Remember, you form the, uh, you're always going to form the, uh, you're always going to, the, the thing which is going to happen is that the hydroxide, OH minus, is going to oxidize, right? That's what always happens. Um, unless you have a halide, in which case the halide would form uh, in, into a halogen. So here we have a halide, which is the Br minus, and that's going to go into bromine. Um, so this is going to go to bromine. So at the positive electron, uh, yes, we're going to have bromine. Uh, and at the negative terminal, guys, we basically have a fight between um, calcium and hydrogen. So basically we're trying to work out um, which of the two from those is more reactive. And uh, if you remember your, um, your table uh, reactivity series, hydrogen is going to be more um is going to be less reactive sorry than um, calcium and the less reactive one is going to form at the negative electrode so hydrogen is going to go to hydrogen rather than calcium two plus go to calcium so this is going to be incorrect because of that so it can't be a um, b uh, again let's do that so you have hydrogen you have oh minus uh you have copper ions here right and then you have nitro ions in here as well right so let's Focus on the positive electrode first. You have OH minus versus NO3 minus. NO3 minus is not a halide, therefore the OH minus um, is going to be the thing which oxidizes, which oxidizes, and therefore at the positive electrode you shouldn't be getting nitrogen. So it can't be this one. Whereas at the negative electrode is going to be the less reactive one, um, and the less reactive one is copper, right? But because the nitrogen is wrong, it can't be this one. Um, the next one, let's see, H plus, OH minus. And then you have uh, you have potassium sulfate, so that's going to be K plus here and SO four two minus here. So at the uh, let's uh, let's do with the positive electrode first. OH minus versus SO four two minus SO four two minus is not a halide, therefore the OH minus is the thing which is going to oxidize, and that normally forms oxygen. All right, so that's fine. This is good. And then we're 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 going to look at the negative electrode which is going to be hydrogen or K plus, which then you're looking at which one um, is more willing to, um, which one is going to be more willing to gain the electrons, right? So, and that's going to be the one that's going to be less reactive and hydrogen is less reactive than potassium. Therefore, hydrogen is what you'll be forming um, at the um, cathode. So that's why C then in this case is going to be the correct answer. And if you just go through the other ones, uh, D and E, when you're molten, you're not worried about water. So in this case, all you're going to have here is at the negative electrode, you're going to have aluminium, 3 plus, and at the positive electrode, you're going to have O2 minus. Um, so at the positive electrode, you should form oxygen. So this is why this is incorrect. This, this should be the other way around. And then if you look at E, sodium chloride, so sodium going to the negative electrode, chloride going to the positive electrode. Um, so positive electrode should be uh, chlorine, good but then the negative electrode isn't hydrogen you don't even have hydrogen involved in the system so that's why it can't be um d and it can't be e so c is the correct answer in this case so hopefully guys that has made sense and as always if you have any questions post them down below and we really look forward to seeing you in the next video